in this session i will be taking up the post transcriptional modifications of ribosomal rna the objective at the end of the session the learner shall be able to know various aspects of post transcriptional modifications of ribosomal rna ribosomal rna is one important rna apart from the messenger rna and transfer rna which play very crucial role in the translation process of course there are many other functions are there i am talking in the perspective of translation okay so it also undergoes the splicing mechanism what we have seen in the messenger rna splicing in the eukaryotic organisms which i am talking about so let us take up the eukaryotic organism eukaryotic system here the ribosomal rna the cleavage as you know splicing is nothing but the cleavage and joining the various parts the cleavage occurs occurs without any without help of any any accessory molecule any accessory molecule what does it mean what does it mean it doesn't require any other molecule that means any other additional protein and any other thing which is not related to ribosomal rna is not required in this splicing process okay so that means in the messenger rna splicing process there are enzymes which are have to be supplied from the outside additional enzymes which are required in this process in this particular process of ribosomal rna that is post transcription modification in this particular type of splicing process it doesn't require any accessory molecule and this is what we call self splicing self splicing that means the ribosome ribosome the ribosomal rna which itself is carrying out its splicing process so how it can be explained how it can be explained that means a part of a part of ribosomal rna a part of the ribosomal rna precursor precursor okay some part of the ribosomal rna precursor so which causes catalysis itself okay itself catalyzes it participates in the catalysis process Catali catalysis process in the cleavage in the splicing process a part of the ribosomal rna okay it may precursor ca causes the splicing process okay these this particular portion we can call it ribozyme this particular portion we can call it ribozymes then the next aspect here how it is taking place this uh, self splicing mechanism okay so one example tetrahymena it is one eukaryotic this organism okay so tetrahymena in this free ribose ribosomal rna free ribosomal rna splicing is initiated splicing is initiated here in this organism splicing is initiated how how the splicing is initiated in this organism it is with a nucleophilic attack it is with the nucleophilic attack we must have studied nucleophilic and electrophilic reactions that i don't have to explain here by the 3 prime hydroxyl group by the 3 prime hydroxyl group okay hydroxyl group that is the how the attack takes place so i will explain in a diagrammatic way in the first reaction i will explain in a diagrammatic way let me see this is the 5 prime this portion is exon okay so then it is connected with the intron it is connected with the intron i will select a different color for the intron this is the intron okay intron the attachment which takes place okay then here again i will take up the go back to original we again write another exon so that is i say that is 3 prime okay this is exon 
okay and this is exon second exon and this is intron this is intron okay so this i can say 5 prime exon this i will say 3 prime exon because one is at the 5 prime end the another one is at the 3 prime end then what will happen a part of the ribosomal ribosomal rna say having 50 nucleotide okay with the 3 prime end it is a portion having the 50 nucleotides this will attack at this portion the 3 prime OH group nucleotide having 50 nucleotides, 50 nucleotides. So, guanosine attacks, 3 prime OH group of the guanosine attacks the intron, intron, here the intron, here 5 prime end, okay, here it is 3 prime end, okay, then again it is 5 prime end, 3 prime end, here 5 prime, here 3 prime end, okay, attacks the introns 5 prime end, introns 5 prime end. Okay, then once it attacks, so what happens? 3 prime OH group, OH group of this GOH at the 3 prime, where it attacks? Attacks, attacks, okay, the 5 prime end of intron, okay, intron. So you can see in the diagram, you can easily identify, this is the 5, five prime end. What happens? By this attack, 3 prime OH group of 3 prime OH group of exon is displaced. Exon is displaced. It is displaced. What does it mean? That means when this the nucleotide, short nucleotide guan, having guanosine 3 prime OH group attacks the 5 prime end. There is a cut taking place here. The cut taking place. What happens here? Three prime OH group exon is cut. It is separated. Okay. Then what will happen? The next one. What happens? This aspect. So there is a forming of. What happens by cutting it simultaneously? Forming a new phosphodiester linkage. A phosphodiester linkage bond formation has taken place it is with what with 5 prime end of intron end of intron it is very simple it is not a complicated let me again go back and explain what happens this 15 nucleotide having guanosine 3 oh attacks here and once attacks here, it forms a phosphodiester linkage with this one, 5 prime intron. And OH group of the here, it is cut here. And with exon having the free OH group. That's all, free OH group. Then next, what happens? Again, I will write a diagrammatic representation. The second step here. In the second step, what happens here? So again, I am writing exon having the OH group. And then second exon, this is this three prime and two exons are there. So what happens here? Once what happens? What, what about other? So let us again go back and write here. Here you see. Yes. This is intron is still connected at one end. One end one end is released. See the how it is taking place systematically. This is exon, 5 prime exon, 3 prime exon. Okay, 3 prime exon. Then what happens simultaneously? So here the 3 prime terminal of the OH group of the this newly formed bond with the exon. It is bond with the exon. Let us see here. Then again I will write. The 3 prime terminal, what is, which one? Terminal of 5 prime, 5 prime exon, exon, okay, exon, attacks, attacks, 5 prime phosphate of 3 prime exon. Again, I will go back to the diagram and explain. So, this is the 3 prime and this will attack the 5 prime phosphate of the 3 prime exon. Okay, what happens? Leads to forming of a phosphodiester linkage. Forming of 
phosphodiester linkage. The next, what will happen? This further takes place. Okay, splicing together, splicing together of two exons. Splicing together of two exons. Two exons. Okay, two exons. So then what will happen? One splicing of the two exons taking place, intron plus small nucleotide, nucleotide, okay, the with gonos in OH is displaced. Displaced. I will show it in the next diagram. Okay, so how it can be shown? Here, 5 prime exon phosphate, okay, 3 prime. This is the how it is happening. Then, next, what is happening here? What are the next step here? You can see here in this the G, okay, then release. See, here what happens? This guanosine phosphate here it is 15 nucleotides, nucleotides. 15 nucleotides. It is 15 nucleotides. Okay. Then what happens in the third step? In the third step, what happens? It's very interesting. In the third step, the terminal OH, this is the terminal OH. Okay. Three terminal OH, three terminal OH group of what is it? It is intron plus 15 nucleotides attacks where it attacks where it attacks a phosphate a phosphate of whom the phosphate of the short nucleotide a phosphate of short nucleotide we are having 15 residues having 15 residues that is being attacked by 3 prime end of the intron okay from the intron end, 5 prime intron, intron end. So, you can see here from the 5 prime intron end. Okay. In that condition, what happens? It displaces, displaces, displaces 5 prime end. You then, here, see the, the, to demarcate between these two, demarcate between these two. Okay. Then, what I do is, here I will write like this. Okay. Then here also, here also, what I do is again I will try to demarcate it. Okay. Demarcate it and mention here the nucleotide and this one. So what happens? It is 3 prime. Here it is 5 prime. Here it is the 5 prime. Then what happens? Attacks this one, attacks here. When it attacks here, what will happen here? Once it attacks here, what will happen? So there is a circular intron plus. Then again, what we get back? We get back. See here, 15 nucleotide. Okay, three prime with three prime OH. See how systematically it took place. So it is displaced. And then, so there is combination of intron and 15 nucleotides. Then, so 3 prime OH attacks here and a phosphate of the nucleotide having 15 residues from the intron end displaces 5 prime end leads to the circular intron. It is circular intron. Okay. Then, leaving behind 15 nucleotide. Okay. The original which we have nucleotide with the guanosine 3 phosphate okay guanosine 3 phosphate this is the how the self splicing mechanism is taking place let me summarize today in this session i am going to take up the in about post transcriptional modifications earlier we talked about the general aspects and also messenger rna now, in this third session, I will be talking about the ribosomal RNA. The objective of this session are various aspects of post-transcriptional modifications of ribosomal RNA. Then, apart from the other 
modifications which take place. There is a specific type of splicing process takes place in the eukaryotic system. Cleavage occurs without help of any accessory molecule. So that means in from outside, it doesn't require any other molecule for the splicing process, for cleavage process. The, within the this ribosomal RNA itself, some portion will carry out the splicing process. That is, we call it self-splicing. What happens? A part of the RNA precursor molecule, okay, so part of the RNA precursor molecule itself catalyzes catalyzes okay in the cleavage process that particular area that particular portion we can call ribozymes okay ribozymes you know rna which act as catalysts one eukaryotic organism tetrahymena we are discussing a pre ribosomal rna how the splicing is initiated it is initiated with a nucleophilic attack. By whom? By the 3 prime OH group. From where that 3 prime OH group? That we will be discussing. Okay. In the 3 reactions, I will discuss. I will complete within the 3 reactions with the 3 diagrams. Okay. Then, let us see here. The, I have taken only 2 exons to make it very simple. This is the exon 1. Okay. This is exon 2. So, it is at 5 prime end, it is, I call it 5 prime exon, it is at 3 prime end, I call it 3 prime exon, connected by an intron. Okay, then a nucleotide having 15 nucleotides with guanosine and 3 prime OH, it attacks it at this, the, the center between exon and intron. Okay, then the, it splits it, the OH group of this one attacks 5 prime end of intron. And the a 3 prime OH group is released, exon is displaced, forming a new phosphodiester bond between this nucleotide and intron 5 prime end. Okay. Then, in the second reaction, once this free OH group is present, this will have the linkage with the, the 5 prime phosphate of the 3, 3 prime exon. Okay. Then, we have this intron and nucleotide combination. Okay, then in this what happens? 3 terminal of 5 prime exon attacks the 5 prime phosphate of 3 prime exon forming a phosphodiester linkage. Okay, then splicing together of exons. Here the splicing together of exons taking place and then releasing intron, the combination of intron plus nucleotide with guanosine 3 phosphate end is displaced. What happens to that one? That combination, what happens to that one? Here, what happens? The 3 prime OH of the intron at 15 nucleotides, it attacks the phosphate, leading to the a phosphodiester linkage. And okay, then there is a release of the 15 nucleotide with guanosine 3 phosphate and circular intron. This is what we call self splicing, the part of the RNA which is carrying out the splicing process. This is about the, the post-transcriptional modifications of ribosomal RNA. Okay, in the next session, I will be talking about transfer RNA. Okay, thank you.